This is a video so many of you have asked for because it's so hard to find some English sources about it. Today I want to show you how to do the Japanese sewing technique Unshin. In case you're here for the first time, my name is Billy Matsunaga and I'm a fully trained and certified kimono teacher and stylist. Sewing a kimono is a whole different skill set from actually what a kimono teacher needs. Kimono teachers will teach you how to dress yourself up, how to dress others up. They can teach you anything about kimono, which also means we kimono teachers, yes, we know the theory of how to make a kimono, but actually doing it is a whole different thing. To be a kimono tailor, in Japan you have to pass a national exam and you also have to work um, years and years and years as a tailor to actually be able to take that exam. I think in the English speaking world you would refer to a kimono tailor as a seamstress. I don't like the word seamstress because it actually says that it's unskilled labor and a kimono tailor is not unskilled at all as well. Seamstress for me sounds very female and there are also a lot of male kimono tailors. So I like to refer to kimono tailors as tailors and in Japanese they are called wasaishi. The art of making a kimono is called in Japanese wasai. And everything that is not making a kimono or a kimono related thing is called yosai in Japanese. So Japanese do make a difference, especially because wasai is very, very famous for its hand sewing technique that is called unshin. And that's what I want to show you today. Unshin produces a normal running stitch and every kimono is stitched together for I think about 98% with that normal running stitch. There are some places that are stitched with a back stitch, but usually kimono is held together by a usual running stitch. And why you might think? Because back stitches are so much more durable. And there are many different reasons that I'm going to tell you in the end of this video, because I think so many of you are actually curious about how to do unshin, and that is what I'm going to show you now. But before we start that, I have to stress that I still see me as a pure amateur. I'm also not pursuing the way of becoming a kimono tailor or taking a certificate in that because it's just a pure hobby for me. So see this video just as a tutorial that shows you how to do unshin and actually gives you some advice on how to achieve that technique. But I don't teach you. I am not a Wasai teacher. That's just something that I have to make really clear. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, first let me show you what you need. I also have a sewing supply video on my channel, but anyway. Um, you of course need a needle. Usually um, they're pretty tiny and thin. They are usually 1.56 millimeters thick and the length is usually 36.4 millimeters. That is what you would get used to. I have pretty big hands, so I can handle them, so you can do too. Of course, you also need um, some thread. This is some I got in my sewing school for um, trying unshin. So this is a very, very old silk thread actually that can be used anymore, so they gave it to me. Then I have this thimble ring that sits in the middle of my, or in the upper half of my middle finger like this. And this is what I'm using for stabilizing the needle. And of course, you also need a piece of fabric you can um, practice with. Um, yeah, mine is already gross, so I pulled out something new. And then I have my kake body here. This is something I can clip the fabric onto and then pull for sewing. This is no must, it's 
good when you have it, but you don't need it. We will see if I'm going to use it today. But actually for Unshin, you don't need that. It only helps you when you really sew together a very long piece of cloth. I have prepared my cotton. I probably should have ironed it so it lies nice and flat. It doesn't, but should be fine for today. Um, I have drawn five lines onto this in a one centimeter distance, which means that the last line is about six centimeters from the edge. And a lot of you will now think, oh my gosh, who has such a huge seam allowance? And let me tell you, when you sew kimono, yes, you will have such a huge seam allowance because you don't cut a kimono in width, you only cut them in length, which means when you sew a kimono for a very slim person, like I recently do for my husband, you will have huge seam allowances. I think the biggest was eight centimeters <laughs> because my husband is very very tiny and yeah so it really helps when you actually practice um, using unshin with a very large or wide seam allowance first i will show you how to hold the needle you hold the tip of the needle between your thumb and your index finger. For me, it's the right hand. When you're lefty, of course, with the left hand. Like so. And your middle finger from the back with this ring stabilizes the needle. That is why you need this thimble ring because that will make sure that it won't hurt and this is how you hold it and when you hold the fabric with this you hold thumb needle fabric index finger and for those who are real sewing beginners when you don't know how long the thread should be when you use a normal running stitch usually the thread should be as long as the seam is and probably a little longer because you will have to do a few back stitches to secure the running stitch so i always go just a few centimeter longer than my actual seam is start with one or two back stitches and make a few running stitches as you're used to Leave the needle inside the fabric like so. Form with your fingers the shape in which the needle will be held. Approach the needle from diagonally above and hold it between index finger and thumb. Let only the tip of the needle peek out. And it should look like this. Stabilize the back of the needle with your middle finger. Reminder, don't push it like this, do only stabilize it. The other hand takes the other side of the fabric and pulls it. Start with pushing the needle with your thumb in a 90 degree angle through the fabric. Lift your index finger. Push the needle back with your index finger again in a 90 degree angle through the fabric. And now you lift your thumb. Push the needle again with your thumb through the fabric and lift your index finger. Push the needle back with your index finger and lift the thumb. Repeat this and try to keep the needle stabilized with your middle finger. You see it is really hard to keep it stabilized and it also might fall down a few times. Don't get frustrated and just practice to stabilize the needle. When you feel you kinda got it, reduce the work of the left hand and try to let only snap the hand that is holding the needle. When you reach the end of the fabric, pull the needle through and spread out the gathered fabric.
As this is just for practicing, you don't need to tie off the thread so you can reuse the fabric and the thread. When you start a new seam, always start the same way. To make this clear, pull the fabric between your hands nicely. Your left hand pulls it with the whole hand, while your right hand only pulls it with index finger and thumb. Look how firmly I pull this. Here you can see how the needle is nicely stabilized through the fabric and the middle finger, so you can lift the index finger. And of course, it is also stabilized the same way, so you can lift your thumb. I think most of you will probably struggle with lifting the thumb. I personally found it very hard to lift the index finger. My teacher was very surprised. <laughs> Finally, a few tips. First, don't put your elbows onto a table while doing this. Keep your arms and elbows free. Second, let also the fabric that you're not holding between your hands hanging loosely. Do only pull the fabric between your left and right hand. By the way, the shorter the distance that is, the easier it is for beginners to sew. When you get better at it, you can have a larger distance. Third, when you're starting to try the master dress, don't care about the length of the stitches or how even they are. Try to keep them somehow straight, that's all. And the first thing you should practice is just to stabilize the needle. Fourth, I'm very bad at straightening out the fabric after stitching, so make really sure to spread out the fabric nicely like I try here and probably do it a little more than I do. As I said before, don't be afraid starting with huge stitches and then when you kind of got the idea of how this works, generally try to get them smaller and this will take probably weeks or even months to master this, so don't give up. When you get really good at Unshin, it usually is loose enough to not put too much tension onto the fabric, but on the other side it's still firm enough to hold everything nicely together. The reason why we have Unshin that holds the kimono or running stitch that holds the kimono together is actually one thing and that is maintenance. In Japan, we have now a lot of different cleaning methods for kimono, but usually every kimono had to be unpicked and then they were put back into a, the kimono roll shape and that was then cleaned. We call that araihari. And after it was cleaned, it had to be retailored. And running stitches make it so much easier to take all those meters and meters and meters and meters of seams out. Another reason is the fabric, because fabric was very valuable in the past, as we all know. And this loose Unshin running stitch is, as I said, loose enough, so there is no tension on the fabric. So if there is a lot of tension on a seam, the fabric wouldn't rip, it's the seam that would rip. And that is very important, because the fabric then can be restitched again. If you have a hole in the fabric, it's gone forever. And that's also a big reason why we use running stitches for kimono. In my journey of learning Vasai, I personally find it very interesting how differently the techniques are in Vasai and Yosai, but still they produce some kind of the same thing. But in my opinion, Vasai techniques are a little more efficient than the Western techniques. And especially because Unshin is so fast when you're really good at it. I wish you so much fun with trying Unshin and really getting good at it. Um, I have really much fun with practicing in front of the TV, even when I don't have anything to sew. Um, there are a lot of more stitching videos following on this channel. Um, I think a lot of you know that I have some hand issues, <laughs> accidents. 
so I wasn't actually able to sew the last two weeks um, so I'm also trying to get back at it um, I by the way also launched my patron you can feel free to check out if you want to see more kimono content and I talk to you in my video next week bye